Our next team will be presented by Julia and Alexandra, coming from Sud, Poland. And this project is to be to solve the challenge type art through technology and has been developed between students from Sud and Mool, also from the Montan Universitat of Leuven in Austria. Thank you so much. The team is called 3D Printing with Ceramics. Hello, everyone. Um, distinguished judges, esteemed guests, and fellow participants, it is with great pleasure uh, that I stand before you today at the Innovation Contest uh, STEM edition. This occasion not only showcases our dedication to a scientific and art exploration, but also celebrates our minds, minds that will shape our future work. So in today's work, we are increasingly paying attention to the inconveniences faced by people with disabilities. Uh, we are adapt adapting architectural spaces and other areas of our lives to accommodate the needs uh, of individuals with disabilities. However, the field of arts is very often overlooked. Um, the main step of our work was to divide the responsibilities among the participants. Uh, we assigned tasks match at uh, each individual skills, which were uh, strong uh, assets for a specific person. Uh, allow me to introduce our team. Uh, first will be Nicola. Nicola was uh, pre was prepare, uh, prepared mixture and uh, ecolo ecologi ecological material. Uh, now I am. Uh, I was uh, the assistant graphic designer. <coughs> then Julia, uh, lead of uh, graphic design. Um, uh, along the line is Alicia, sculpture and 3D printing maker. Uh, and last but certainly not least, Arthur and Manuel, uh, the thermal distribution researchers and sculptors. Uh, so let me introduce our mentors, the Barbara Sonkasupik, she is here. Uh, she is uh, our general supervisor, Krzysztof Gron, art director, and Marek Krenzer, who is here today, 3D printing manager, and Sheng Lijin, uh, thermodynamic mentor. So we are adapt adapting buildings, museums, and art galleries so that people with disabilities can freely access them. Uh, but do we actually adapt the art to be accessible to those who might not possess all their senses? It is possible to provide audio descriptions to, so they convey the message and story of a particular artwork. However, this alone is insufficient uh, for a visually impaired person to understand how the artwork looks. The combination of senses and the ability to comprehend the visual image. Our response to solve this problem uh, was, uh, conveyed, um, provide, uh, was design puzzles uh, for the visually impaired, allowing them to experience uh, different textures, different shapes, uh, contours, and allowing them to read artworks, but connected with um, resources from uh, architectural recycled materials. So initially, we prepared the clay mixture and selected the first one. Uh, then the next step uh, involved uh, 3D modeling uh, of the puzzles. And after including the models, uh, we prepared the final product. So let's start from the beginning. The topic of recycle, uh, recycling construction material is important because it uh, engages issues related to sustainable development. Our goal was to create a mixture with good strength that becomes plastic under pressure while using recycled materials from construction rates. Um, the innovation uh, lies in combining waste clay with waste out of, uh, out of clay con uh, concrete 
water glass and crushed uh, clay. Uh, there is no material with exactly the same combination available from existing sources. Uh, we use, as I said, as I said, we use clay, uh, autoclave, autoclave concrete with, uh, with, um, with uh, made of recycled uh, made of recycled uh, materials uh, because it makes the, our mixture more uh, ecological and fits in uh, the idea of circular economy. Uh, now we testing uh, our our mixture and checking to the flow, uh, making to the beans and uh, testing uh, in homogenization in fridge. Uh, we design forty different mixtures and uh, we divide it into six series. Uh, we experiment with uh, some additives like glass plasticizers or different uh, metacoline uh, materials. Uh, as we can see, uh, here we have mixture flow test, um, then flexural strange and compressive strange test. Uh, as we can see, we have so many different uh, samples. Did we have next chart to to uh, research and uh, to research mixture mixture flow or our uh, our material. Also, we tested uh, if it can be heated and melted, uh, and analyze. Uh, its heat properties to find the maximum thickness for the created parts uh, of our mixture. So now, uh, as the first step in your project, uh, they consider the execution of uh, target models of the puzzles. So uh, we can see that we designed three different models of different um, artworks. Uh, the prototype that we finally printed uh, is Cubist uh, painting of Fabio Picasso, here, which we probably all know. Uh, Cubism provides us uh, with a simple geometric forms enabling the first print, uh, and our target form uh, is to print puzzles of various heights, uh, as you can see on the first and on the last one, uh, which will not only create a more interesting um, effect of presenting the image, uh, but also ensure a better perception uh, of the foreground with the background. So uh, the first stage of our work was to find the right image. And unfortunately, this task seems quite simple, but it's really not, uh, because not uh, every image um, was suitable for potential printing uh, and then firing. Some of them, for example, just had two small elements that could shrink and then not fit into the complete puzzle. <coughs> so um, at this stage, the image, image was redrawn to 2D graphic, uh, containing only the line that divides the uh, elements. And the, fin the finished graphic file was converted to the XIF extension that allows uh, us to import um, this image to SketchUp as a group of polylines that then can be extruded and push pull to the um, to the uh, height we wanted. Uh, in our case, that was three centimeters, uh, and then we scale it to the appropriate dimensions. Uh, there are also other methods that can be used to make this type of models. However, these methods are more time consuming and do not give us the opportunity to make negative, which turn out to be a crucial uh, in the later stage of our work. You can see here that there is a 3D model of a, of a puzzle. However, there is a form that we fit print into the filament. Uh, this is a negative uh, that later uh, had to be 
been divided into the four different uh, forms. So um, that so it could be just printed because we were the limits uh, of the dimension of the printer. Uh, so yes, this is uh, the chart where we can see that here is uh, the model, and then we prepared the final uh, forms um, for fluid printing. Here, uh, those are the forms that we want to create. Um, we can see that there are differences uh, in height, um, and we can clearly see that the foreground is much higher than the background. Uh, so it's some kind of like sensory puzzles form for uh, the people with um, people who are blind. Also, there's another uh, painting from Tamara Lankitska. This is a very famous Polish uh, painter. And you can see the animation here uh, of the puzzles. So uh, we did not only print using the negative. Uh, in the earlier stage, uh, we printed puzzles for the smallest ones. Uh, it was a uh, six-piece puzzle uh, showing the face of well-known minimums. Um, these puzzles were printed directly from the filament, uh, which was clay. Uh, the 3D model that enables this type of printing look like this. Um, those are actually two types. One uh, is solid and another one is void inside. Uh, and this is actually the one where we can be printed. And then we can just uh, fill it up with clay at the later stage. This is how the shell puzzles look like. You can see them here. Uh, and 3D printing. So to take the possibilities uh, of the 3D printers, uh, we firstly made the small beams uh, of all mixtures that we created and take the shrinkage, deformation, and flexural strength. And at the later stage, we printed the first piece of puzzles uh, using the file mixture we created. Uh, and then there was a 3D printing uh, of molds for making elements for uh, Picasso's painting. The form is printed with a filament uh, which will allow for faster uh, and mass duplication of elements, even for example at home. The final form uh, of the print printout allows us to duplicate the elements by filling the form completely or uh, just partly with clay or splitting the elements out of the wall of clay. Uh, the five puzzles were glazed with appropriate colors and fired again in the clean at the appropriate temperature. So due to the fact uh, that the image cannot be understood by touch, we wanted to, test for, to transfer the image into a spatial form uh, that will not only enable fun, but also allows you to get to know the artistic environment in a better way. Um, in conclusion, I want to say that our material uh, can be used not only for puzzles, but only for printed houses. It's recycled material, yeah? ecological, uh, making from... Uh, making from... Uh, out of uh, concrete, which is uh, which is recycled. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say that we should remember that art can be like intelligence, uh, can be like uh, can be like. Um, So, uh, we want art to can be our future. Art, no, it's isn't. Art is isn't a simple thing. Art is our future. We can make art, and we uh, we can make some difficult things um, connected with art. With art. Thank you so much.
ejemplo de Max de Presentation, no, la profesora Sadis, una Mexicana Cuesta, que es matemática. Ok. Es bueno para la matemática. Porque mi software GeoGebra tiene un 3D explanation poster, es muy bueno. So my question, how does your project post the boundaries of traditional artistic medium or techniques throughout the integration of technology? Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to create uh, at the first stage more simple as a prototype. However, we want to go bigger and we want to create uh, something that will be not only defined as a something we play, but also different with height, height uh, that uh, helps not only, for example, young people, but also children in schools as a form of fun. Uh, and um, maybe later on museums uh, to create the environment, easy to access for everyone, um, that will be um, just yeah, that will be seen uh, for kids and also for people with disabilities. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, now, Professor yeah. Petrissan. Thank yeah. you. Have uh, you made an evaluation about the price? I mean, it is it should be accessible for other people or it is more expensive? Mm. Mm. Uh, okay, so uh, no, uh, it will be accessible for uh, people. Uh, the price of making this is not uh, really high. Obviously, the glazing is <laughs> quite also um, uh, expensive, uh, and the machines that we use are also uh, expensive. However, the outcome uh, might not be as expensive uh, as it seems to be. Okay, thank you very much. So, Professor Partis Medeiros. <laughs> Not a business question, now a technical question. How do you segment the artwork? How do you cut these pieces? And how do you find the texture? Okay, so the pieces uh, at first stage uh, was cut in the program such as SketchUp. Uh, however, later we made the negative of the form that we 3D printed. Uh, we also have the forms here. Uh, and those bigger puzzles of Picasso uh, were just, um, the forms were filled up, fill, filled up with clay, uh, then dried uh, in a clean, uh, and then obviously glazed. Um, however, there's also a possibility to 3D print from, directly from the clay, um, as we did uh, with the previous puzzles of uh, Minnie Mouse. So you do it by hand, the sketch? Huh? Yes, in this case, uh, with Picasso, we did that by hand, uh, and uh, the previous one were made uh, by 3D printers. Okay, thank you very much for making art more accessible. Uh, thank you very much for choosing Picasso. <laughs> yes. Both French and Spaniards are going to like him, so maybe you <laughs> don't agree. Uh, have you ever considered do you know Gaudí, who is our favorite architect here in the city? Do you don't know Gaudí? Gaudí, yes, yeah, okay. you know, yes, we do. It's, uh, probably it's good for making some, some things uh, he has been uh, created. But uh, do you also consider this, uh, about apart from uh, education and uh, uh, high schools, those sorts of things in uh, decoration? How yes, actually, uh, I think that this looks quite uh, interesting. As in, for example, mosaic, you can buy it and just, you know, uh, put it into the. Yeah, uh, I would like to buy it. Yes, exactly, and you can just put it onto the table mm -hmm. as a form of uh, decorative art, mm -hmm. or maybe even uh, just um, stick it together and put it, put it in uh, as a mosaic on the wall, for example. So I, I also was thinking about uh, this uh, kind of stuff, and I think it looks quite good as just as a decorative element. I encourage you to do that because it's uh, quite attractive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
so thank you very much for thank your presentation. You so much. And uh, we will have only one left now. Yes, we okay. have the last day. Okay, okay. Yes, so thank you so much.